Okay, guys, so this is going to serve as our introduction to the digestion and nutrition. Um, in order to save a little bit of time in class, we're going to go over some of the dry, boring vocab in the beginning and this, and we'll kind of tackle the rest from there. All right, so uh, following right along with your handout, it'll be titled the same thing, Digestion and Nutrition, a little bit of different formatting, but uh, should be just, okay? So first vocab word for us here is digestion, right? So digestion is the mechanical, okay, and chemical breakdown of food. So mechanical is like chewing and the stomach crushing things up, um, and then chemical is going to be our acids breaking things down, the enzymes breaking things down. Um, but the key is we're going to break them down into a size that we can absorb and then use in the body. Okay, so that's key, guys, the absorption. Okay? So what exactly is absorption? Everybody uses this phrase, but most people have a hard time with it. So um, the contents, uh, if, imagine the contents of your stomach. Um, when they're in your stomach, they can't be used by cells. It's It's got to actually get absorbed from those cells into the... Um, the lining of the digestive tract through diffusion and facilitated diffusion. We use lots of other stuff, but ultimately we need to take the stuff. What it's really talking about is taking the stuff and putting all the stuff into your blood. Okay, and once it's in your blood, it's now accessible to all of your cells of your body. So, uh, you eat a candy bar, um, you break down all that sugar, and then you absorb the monosaccharides, the smallest piece of the glucose, and then that glucose will circulate around in your blood and can be used for to make ATP. Right. Um, interesting thing, a lot of people actually refer to, um, don't refer to the food in the digestive tract as actually being in the body. It's just passing through you. So if you like swallow a quarter, for instance, um, that quarter is not actually going to go into your body. It's going to pass right through you, through the tunnel that goes from mouth to anus, called the alimentary canal or GI tract, gastrointestinal tract. Either one, either word works, okay? Um, and all that is is your hollow tube that goes uh, right from your mouth to anus, okay? And I kind of brought out the pathway here for you. Um, you know, mouth, uh, pharynx is essentially your throat. Esophagus is the tube that goes down to your stomach. Uh, and then it goes from your stomach to the small intestine, large intestine, and then out the anal canal. Um, so that quarter, if you swallowed a quarter, it would just pass through this tract and nothing happens unless it is absorbed. So absorption is really, really important in this process. People uh, really tend to um, ignore it in the, in the whole process. Right? So that's the alimentary canal. And then all the other stuff we're going to be talking about are called accessory organs. So all the things that help. Okay. So the salivary glands, they make saliva that helps with digestion. Your liver is really important digestion, your gallbladder, uh, the pancreas, all these things that help, but the food doesn't actually enter them. The food goes through this tube, and for the most part, these guys are all going to secrete stuff in there to help digest. So they make some enzymes, and they make bile, all sorts of stuff. Right. So let's take a look at a picture, um, and here's that. Um, the, here's the overview of the digestive system. So um, our pathway, right? So we've got our mouth and the pharynx, okay? Then the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, okay? And all of these things here, along with the salivary glands, those are really the accessory organs, so they're going to squirt stuff in. So food, the quarter would actually go right through this whole pathway, right on down through into the stomach. This is all the small intestine coiling back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, right up and around. This is the large intestine, kind of makes almost like a picture frame around the outside. Um, and then there's the anus right there, okay? Uh, let's see here. All right, so I want to run through the major classes of nutrients, and we're going to really focus on this particular side. We're going to focus on carbohydrates. So I wish this was a little bit bigger, but, um, and they're made by photosynthesis from plants, and that's wonderful for us, okay? So we have three big sizes that you want to know, okay? So the first one, you've heard of monosaccharides, right? So this is listed in your packet as A, okay? Um, so monosaccharides, that's your single, mono, single sugars, okay? Um, and they all have the same formula, which is C6, H12O6, right? Um, and the most famous one is glucose, but you'll also hear a lot about fructose and galactose. Um, and those are all monosaccharides. Once they get absorbed into the body, everything gets changed into glucose. So all this fructose will get converted into glucose. Um, the galactose will be converted into glucose, so we can use it for ATP. All right. uh, the next one down, which is labeled B in your packet, are the disaccharides, double sugars, okay? Um, and you, you put them together, and there's three disaccharides are maltose, sucrose, and lactose. Um, most of you guys heard of lactose because of lactose intolerance, um, and that's when somebody can't digest this. Uh, they're actually missing the enzymes, so they can't digest this sugar, um, and uh, that causes all sorts of stomach problems that we're going to talk about later. All right, and then the third group are the polysaccharides. That means big. 
um, many sugars, right? Many sugars. Um, glycogen is one that you probably, you may or may not have heard about. It's found in all animals. They store it as um, sugar. Uh, it's like a sugar pill. So you can break this down really fast. Fast Glycogen, when you need energy, can be broken down super fast into those monosaccharides, into glucose. So this is kind of like your body's little pet pill. Okay. Um, starch is what you're mostly familiar with. That's what's found in potatoes and pasta and things like that. That's our biggest one. And the third one is fiber. And fiber is an interesting one because it's also called cellulose. And we don't have the enzymes. We do not have the enzymes to digest it. Um, so we don't actually absorb these sugars. This is actually a sugar. Fiber is a sugar. Um, but for us, we just poop it out. Um, and it serves all sorts of purpose for us because it reduces your cholesterol. Um, it reduces your risk for colon cancer. It's really good stuff for us, um, primarily because we don't absorb it. Um, we just poop it right out. Other animals have those enzymes, so a cow, when it eats grass, it's actually taking sugar out of that grass, whereas we would get almost nothing out of that grass, okay? We just end up pooping it up, all right? All right, so here are our lipids. Here's our next major class, and this is going to be our lipids, right? Um, oh, sorry, that's funky. All right, so here are our lipids. All right, A, B, and C. So A is our triglycerides. That's what we mostly think of as fat. So when you talk about fat and food, remember lipids is essentially fat. We did this early in the year. Okay. Um, so fat. Um, the triglycerides, that's what's found in, in food. That's what we think of as like oils. Uh, typically, they're going to be two categories. They're going to be unsaturated, which we think of as oils. So unsaturated are our oils and our saturated are our fats. Um, but generally, these are your, uh, your oils and your fats. So whenever you look at food and it's got like a fat content, you're talking about triglycerides. Right? Um, we also have phospholipids because phospholipids make up cell membranes. So any plant material you eat always has some phospholipids in there. It doesn't add up to much in your calories, so we don't really count that very much. Um, and then the sterols um, is what we make up with hormones and cholesterol. And again, you don't really count that. So when we talk about nutrition, we're really talking about what we eat are triglycerides, but uh, lipids are really important because we have to be able to make these things. We have to be able to make phospholipids. So fat is important in our diet for that reason. And it's also important because we have to be able to make hormones. Um, and we talked about that with a female athlete triad or in the year where a person gets so lean they don't have enough fat, they can't make hormones. Um, and their menstrual cycle stops and they have bone density issues. They have all sorts of problems. All right, and this last slide here, or this next slide, covers uh, three different groups. So the first group is protein, okay? And protein, remember, is big, long chains of amino acids, old review for us, 20 amino acids. Um, and all you do is you string those amino acids like beads on a, um, a chain, and, and that um, results in different proteins. And what happens is those proteins, because of electrical bonds, uh, the sequence we just call the primary structure. And then what happens is they tend to fold around each other, um, and they start to form a three-dimensional structure. We call that the secondary. And then those structures fold around, they're called, they're called the tertiary. And then when they actually kind of bond together, multiple proteins kind of bonding together, uh, you get this quaternary structure. Okay? Um, typically found in meat, as you would expect, but there is a lot in dairy and veggies and so forth. Right. Uh, the next one, nucleic acids, really simple, old review for us, DNA and RNA, chains of nucleotides, remember that's the A, the T, the C, the G, uh, that makes up the chain of it. Um, and we aren't going to talk about this in the digestion portion, um, and pretty much if you're eating any material, you're taking in enough nucleic acids to build whatever you need. So this really, it's important, but we're not going to focus on it. All right. And then the last chunk here, the vitamins, minerals, and water, that's going to be at the end of our nutrition unit, about uh, you know, a week or so in, we're going to focus on these vitamins. And minerals. So when you actually look at the side of a digestive tract, there's actually going to be layers here. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about each of these layers. We're going to zoom in on that and talk about each of those layers called the mucosa and the submucosa and muscularis and serosa. So that's what we're looking at. We'll come back to that picture in just a moment. Okay. So the mucosa is the innermost layer. That's the part that comes in contact with the food passing through. Um, and it's full, got lots and lots of fold, uh, folds on it. Um, we talked about villi and microvilli earlier in the year. That's where you'll find those. And really the job here, this is where you're going to get the secretion of enzymes and the absorption of all the nutrients. So that's what's going on. Okay. Underneath that is the sub mucosa, right? Sub means underneath or below. So that makes really good sense. And that's the connective tissue that you always have to have underneath the epithelial tissue that makes up the mucosa. So that's kind of what you're looking at. Um, lots of connective tissue, blood vessels, all the stuff in there. So when you absorb stuff, it goes through the mucosa into the submucosa and into the blood vessels and gets carried away.
Right. The third layer is the muscularis, um, and that's smooth muscle, remember, involuntary, um, and that's what squeezes the food and crushes it up and mixes it up and pushes it through our digestive tract, that's the muscularis externa, okay? Um, and then the final layer is the serosa, and that would be on the outside. So if we opened up somebody's abdomen and we pulled out their stomach, what you would see on the outside would be the serosa, okay? Um, and really the main job is it makes the outside slippery. Okay? That's his main job. So your digestive organs, when you squish side to side and you lean forward or back, um, your digestive tra organs are kind of sliding around and moving quite a bit um, in place. All right, so let's look at those layers on this screen. Okay, so mucosa on the inside, you can see the folds here with the surface area for absorption. Um, the area that's in blue underneath that, that's the submucosa. That's where the blood vessels would be for the absorption right in there. So we'd absorb stuff there. Then you have a layer of muscle, and then you have the serosa on the outside would be the slippery layer. All right. Um, and the last slide that we really need to talk about on here, guys, um, is the movement. So uh, your GI tract, that, that, sm that smooth muscle we just talked about, that muscularis layer, right, this layer, um, has uh, two types of movements. So one is mixing. So in your stomach and in your digestive tract, you get enzymes in there, and you're um, almost kind of like a... Um, like you would shake something up to dissolve it. That's kind of the mixing movements, okay? They're interesting, but they're not terribly, terribly fun to talk about. The one we really want to talk about is the propelling movements. And propelling movements are usually what we refer to as peristalsis. So it's like a wave that squeezes things down through the digestive tract. Um, and uh, you can actually, if you put your hand like on your throat, uh, like your whole palm against your throat, and you swallow, you can actually feel that wave. So if you give that a try, you can feel that wave moving down, and that's the wave of contraction squeezing your saliva down your throat. All right. Um, here's a little picture showing you the same idea. So all it is is really you squeeze here, and whatever this is moves that, that direction. Then you squeeze a little bit closer, and it'll move a little further, and squeeze a little closer, and so you get a wave like you're pinching it down there. Okay. Um, and the way I like to think of it is it, it, the, be the best analogy is that if you think about like squeezing toothpaste out of a tooth, um, you know, you get to the end of like your toothpaste in a uh, tube of toothpaste and you squeeze from the bottom, you squeeze towards the top and it squeezes it out. That's peristalsis. Your body does that for you. Um, the other way to think of it is just like pooping. So pooping, if you squeeze right here, this is actually how you poop as well. Um, so you swallow food this way, but you also poop this way um, and you squeeze um, uh, the poop out of your butt. Um, that's what you, what's going on here. Um, and I really like that analogy because now the next time you brush your teeth and you're squeezing the toothpaste on there, you're going to be thinking of pooping, which is kind of fun. Um, uh, hopefully that'll stick in your head for a little while. Uh, any questions? So your job, hopefully you marked things as you went through this and you're going to walk in the class and you're going to say, hey, I didn't get this. I was a little confused here. Um, and we'll tackle those questions before we start talking about what happens at each step along that GI tract, the alimentary canal. Have a good night, guys.